Personal finance practice problem using Excel. Zero coupon bond price calculation. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank, example, answer key. Let's look at it now. Information on the left, calculations on the right. We're calculating the price of a bond. However, this time, unlike a normal bond, these are zero coupon bonds. So remember, in a normal bond, we calculate the bond price thinking of the present value of the two streams of cash flows, one being the interest payments and annuity stream of cash flows, the second being that present value of one, the lump sum, the amount that we would receive at maturity. If we're talking about a zero coupon bond, we are eliminating then the interest portion, the annuity component of the cash flows. It would be kind of like we're loaning, for example, a company or government money and they're just going to be paying us back instead of paying us like rent as we go interest payments they're just paying us the principal at the end now of course given the fact that they're going to be paying back the face amount at the end that means that we're going to still want a return on this how are we going to be building in the return well we're going to then purchase the bond at the beginning we're going to loan the money at the beginning for something less than the face amount and therefore they're going to give us the face amount at the end and the difference is in essence interest on the bond so the second tab is going to be the practice tab where we have some pre-formatted cells so you can work through the practice problem with less excel format in the third tab we're going to be doing the excel formatting we just have the information on the left if you don't even have that you can open up a blank excel worksheet and just select the triangle up top right click on that and lay down your baseline formatting so that you could build on top of it. Put down that foundation. We can put the currency down here. I usually go to brackets and then say no dollar sign, no decimals. I'm not going to hit OK because I've already done this. I'm just going to X out of it up top. Then you enter your data on the left hand side. As you do so, format the cells as needed. For example, the percentages. And then I typically make a skinny C column and we're good to go. So let's do it. We'll do a couple examples of this. It should be actually easier than a normal bond because now we don't have two streams of payments. We only have that one lump sum we're going to be receiving at the end, but we'll structure it just as we've done with other bonds so we can get a feel of the likeness of the differences. So we've got the face amount, the zero coupon bond. We're not going to be getting the interest payments. The issue to yield is going to be the 5% years to maturity are going to be 15 and so let's just go ahead and uh, put up top here. This is going to be the price we'll calculate. Let's make this black and white. I'm going to make it black and white. Black and white. Plain so we can see it. Present value of interest. Now we don't have any present value of interest. That's what we normally do with a bond because it's zero. And then we've got present value of the face amount amount that we're going to get at maturity and so that's all we're going to calculate given the uh, issue to yield in essence the market rate so we're going to say negative present value shift nine which is going to be the rate we're going to say 15 we'll say these are yearly bonds instead of semi-annual bonds so we don't have to do any funny business changing the rate or anything like that and we'll just say comma number of periods is going to be 15 years because we're going to be uh, talking in years not in terms of semi-annual business comma we don't have any payments because we're not getting any payments we're not getting the interest payments we're not dealing with an annuity so two commas comma comma we're going to the future value we're going to get that one thousand dollars at the end the face amount at the end if i'm going to get one thousand dollars 15 years into the future how much am i willing to purchase the thing for now we're talking four hundred and eighty one dollars therefore there's interest imputed in this kind of calculation because of course the difference between the one thousand and the one eighty one that we actually are paying for is in essence the interest that are, we're kind of imputing into the calculation so that means the bond price so the price is of course the sum of these two which is just there's no nothing on the zero side of things because we're not doing anything with the interest payments let's make that black i mean uh, blue let's make it blue and bordered we're going to hit the bucket drop down if you don't have that blue we go on the color wheel the wheel of color and i just pick the same color every time i've got all these colors i can use but i just use the same one 
with the blue font. We're gonna make that boarded. Let's do it again. Ultra vez por favor with the second set of data down here. We just changed the interest rate to 9% so we can see the interest rate climb in here. Let's calculate the price again. And let's make that black and white, do some formatting. Home, we're gonna make that black and white on the head er. And then this is gonna be, I'll just say this equals the present value of the interest. This equals the present value of the face amount. We have no interest. I'm just putting that in place so you could see how we would normally calculate normal bonds and we're missing the interest component because it's a zero coupon bond. Doing our calculation here, negative present value, shift nine. We're looking at the rate now, 9%. There's the change, comma. Number of periods is still 15. We're gonna say comma, comma, because this is not an annuity. We don't have any interest payments. We're just looking at that lump sum. We're gonna get at the end of the 15 years, discounting it back at the 9%, $1,000 and enter. So we're now only willing to pay $275 for that bond at this point in time because you're not gonna give me that $1,000 face amount until 15 years have passed, discounted at the 9%. If we price that out, sum that up, equals the S to the U to the M. We get the same number, of course, because there's no, I'm putting some underlines here. Let's make that blue and bordered, and then we'll do it uno vase mas one more time. Por favor, I didn't hear no bell. I don't stop unless I hear bells, which happens randomly for some reason. I don't know why. I don't think bells actually ring. They just some chime in my head for some time telling me to stop. So I don't stop until I hear a bell. It's like Rocky. Rocky Balboa. Rocky Balboa! So no one even knows that movie anymore. <laughs> What are, you, what, are you, what are you even talking about? Just do the bond calculation. So once again, we're gonna say zero. Now the interest rate's up at the 12%. 12% negative present value, shift nine. The rate is gonna be uh, now 12%, comma. Number of periods is still at the 15, comma, comma, because we're not talking annuity. We're talking about present value one. We're looking at that future value we're gonna get 15 years later, this time discounted at 12%, which means we're only willing to pay up front at this point to get that $1,000 15 years later, discounted 12%, $183. And that's gonna be the price that we're gonna sell. I'll give you $183 today for $1,000 15 years from now. It's kind of like wimpy. On, I'll give you a dollar today for to pay me on Tuesday except we hope that these people will actually pay us. We can trust these people. Trust is important in the transaction. They're gonna, you're gonna pay me 15 years later. Are you gonna be around? Are you even gonna be around 15 later? Yeah, they're gonna be, okay then. You better not, you better not skip town. I want my thousand dollars 15 years from now. You can bet that I'll be knocking on your door 15 years from now, because I gave you $183 today and you said you'd give me a thousand dollars in 15 years so that's basically the idea of it again it should be an easier calculation due to the fact that we don't have that two kind of cash flow streams with it but just the one kind of cash flow stream with it but you got to keep that in mind when uh, you hear that you know that kind of bond structure which is often common place if you're talking about very short-term bonds but could also be there for other terms as well